Good morning, everybody. I wanted to do a short video on um, what has become known as the May Day Mystery or the May Day Mysteries. Uh, this is something that I've actually talked about for a couple of years now, if you're familiar with um, my work, not specifically on this channel, but generally on live streams and stuff like that. This is something that I had been interested in and looking into for a while. Um, this is just going to be a short video on this, a brief introduction, if you will. Perhaps I would make a more detailed video on it in time, but this is something that is continuing to this day. It still has not been solved, although there are uh, many theories of who is behind the May Day mystery. For people who are unfamiliar with this, um, ads were placed in the Arizona Daily Wildcat newspaper. Uh, the ads typically have what has become known as Smiley Guy, and they typically reference SR slash CL, um, and they have gotten more complex in time. Uh, it was discovered that a gentleman named uh, Robert Truman Hungerford, who is an attorney, was the one placing the ads. He claims to be sort of an intermediary for the group um, and places the ads. We don't know if he is the one drafting the ads that are appearing in the Wildcat, but they're very, very bizarre. They seem to reference Protestant Christianity, perhaps a doomsday religious cult, and bizarre... Um, bizarre sentiments, shall, shall we say. They become known as an organization referred to as the Orphanage or the Order of the Unreconstructed Freaks. So <laughs> there's that. Um, but what's really strange about them is that as people have begun to research the May Day Mysteries, the Orphanage has begun communicating with people, reaching out to them, if you will, um, and the, the puzzles have become more complex. They've also sent mail to Brian, the gentleman who runs the website, maydaymysteries.org. We will look at the website. This is the website. Um, Brian Hans is the gentleman uh, who runs this. And it's very interesting because since he began uh, running the website, he's been contacted by these people uh, from the orphanage. And um, it's just gotten very strange. So as you can see, there's a recent um, advertisement that was placed, but let's talk about the beginnings of this. Let's go to the mystery itself. Let me zoom in so people can read this better. Hopefully y'all can see that well. The mystery, the game seems to revolve around May 1st for people unfamiliar with this. The May Day um, is a, like a spring, spring or summer like ancient festival but it is more commonly known as sort of like a communist thing like the may day marches and things like that so it's sort of tied to communism and socialism in that sense the game seems to revolve around may 1st commonly known as may day the solution to solving the puzzle lies within unraveling a series of complex, detailed, and interwoven pages that are printed every May 1st in the Arizona Daily Wildcat, the student-run newspaper on the University of Arizona campus. But there are other um, ads being placed as well, not just on May Day, which seem to be almost quarterly reports or um, just additional information. In addition, there are occasional corrective pages well, I call them that, others disagree, that run on seemingly random and unconnected dates that update the state of the game. Such ads are usually short, just as cryptic, and seek to modify part of an existing May Day page to reflect necessary changes to the game, i.e. one such page makes a reference to a road or path that is unpassable and gives alternate coordinates with an apologetic tone. Every single page will mention several clues, keywords, and dates, as well as other dates and page numbers of related May Day pages that can be found in the back issue of the Arizona Daily Wildcat. The pages seem to be interwoven with one another. I've done extensive 
search um, to dig up as many of the Mayday pages as I can, and I've analyzed them extensively. I've hit a wall. I don't know all the obscure languages and symbols. Here is what I know. Someone is doing their historical homework. There's a wealth of obscure historical information here, ranging from references to historical figures, religious and otherwise, to items and occurrences. There is a historical relevance to solving the game. Someone is doing their mathematical homework. Once again, more strange symbols and whatnot, ranging from physics to chemistry to binary encodings, the clues come in every shape and form. The game's author seems to have a fascination with information encoding systems and the like, like cryptology. Someone has extra money to burn on this puzzle. Full page ads in the Arizona Daily Wildcat aren't cheap. They're over $1,000 each in some cases, and the pages have been running for over 10 years. This leads me to believe they, the authors, are older in age and an established professional. The game's author is familiar with the Tucson area and the University of Arizona campus. Like I said, it's a semi-local game, but you can't tell that until you really get into the clues. There there seems to be a reward or an endpoint. There are references to a safe deposit box located in a bank in the downtown Tucson area. I'm not promising anything as I have not unraveled the mystery. It could be a red herring, in which case I'll kick the author in the blank when I meet them. All of this suggests a deliberate, organized effort to carefully construct a puzzle leading that the um that leads to some eventual endpoint i can guarantee you the mayday pages are not the work of a mentally challenged individual or a lunatic i take the above statement back they could completely they could be completely loony freaks but as of uh, january 15th 1999 i believe they are at least interesting loony freaks and worthy of some attention whatever their intentions they're too systematic they're too detailed and like i said they're expensive so he has promised um, the webmaster, Brian, uh, all of the information he gets, he will post as soon as possible and try to do things as fast as his school and work schedule were per will permit. To the Mayday mystery author, you have a lot of explaining to do. So let's go back to the history. In 1994, I came to Tucson, Arizona from Columbus, Ohio to attend college at the University of Arizona. I was majoring in journalism and minoring in computer science at the time. My freshman year was full of everything it should be, of new experiences and faces and sensations. I was alive with ignorant bliss, only found in the eyes of a freshman. I lived life. But on May 1st, 1995, I ran across the first May Day page in the Arizona Daily Wildcat, the student-run campus newspaper. The cryptic mix of languages, symbols, and mathematics intrigued me, but I chalked it up to an obscure campus organization or some fraternity or drugs. I was, after all, a freshman. One year later, on May 1st, 1996, I saw my second May Day page. I knew something was up, but I did no research. A year after that, in 97, I saw the third May Day page. By then, I had gone to work for the Arizona Daily Wildcat as their webmaster, and I had new resources available to me. I had back issues and the internet and thus I entered the game. After a two-week frenzy of digging through dusty back issues, hunting down obscure sources, chasing leads, and rejoicing in the sheer mystery of what I'd found, I assessed the situation. I had discovered a very local, very obscure mystery with roots reaching back to the 1970s. Someone somewhere is spending a decent amount of money to propagate a complex logic puzzle. The complexity of the puzzles was mind-boggling, encompassing cryptic historical references, symbology, languages, and mathematical calculations. Someone is spending a great deal of time and brain power to construct these mysteries. Lastly, much to my delight, the game is still afoot. The May Day pages continue. I have unraveled the May Day pages as far as I can. I need help. There is an update from February 1st, 1999. Myself and others have been contacted by the people behind the pages. Their emails make a few things very clear. So in the name of not pissing them off any further than I already have, 
I make few clarifications. They say it is not a game. They say it has some sort of cause. They say it is not necessarily Tucson-centric. And they say we're getting there, but pointed out some large errors and missing portions, clarified a few wrong assumptions. And yeah, I spelled Lamas wrong in about 9 million different places. Sheesh. I told you it was weird. So that is the history. We'll go to the lexicon. Uh, the portion of this site is very out of date. It has become impossible to keep up with millions of clues we have amassed in the individual pages. So there is a summary document that you can look at. Whee! Um, you can do that on your own. We don't need to waste time going through that. But there are different things here. A chess player and uh, Alakine. Alexander Alekine, Grandmaster, uh, Arabella, the boat John Winthrop, Governor of Massachusetts, came to America in. He wrote a sermon, a model of Christian charity while aboard, outlined the process of God for New England. A brasher Dowbloon, a rare coin worth a lot of money. Um, also a film based on Raymond Chandler's The High Window. A Busselfon a.k.a. Myleron, a pharmaceutical used in treating kinds of leukemia. From PDR, quote, there is no known antidote to busulfan. Also, uh, Myleron is a potent drug. It should not be used unless a diagnosis of chronic um, meliogenosis leukemia has been adequately established and the responsible physician is knowledgeable in assessing response to chemotherapy, unquote. From Physician's Desk Reference, 1994, page 731. So there's a lot of different things in here. And what these are, um, are from the ads themselves. Um, so they, these ads are very bizarre and they make all kinds of references. The late motif, a dominant theme. You'll see that on each of these little ads and they have map coordinates on them. So I think you can spend a lot of time maybe getting into the complexities of these, but I don't think that that's necessarily um what anyone should be spending their time doing so this is the ads themselves um from what the we know the first ad was placed may 1st 1981 that's actually as far back as the archives of the wildcat go so there could be ads that were placed before that there could be ads going back to the 1960s for all we know but we do not have access to the archives so as far as we know and what the archives permit this was the first ad um, the first ad reads SR slash CL Richmond, and then there are Chinese characters, May Day 1981. So these are, you can submit clues for each of these ads, which is really cool. And these are some of the uh, clues that people have put on this. So they have read the Chinese, and it essentially means long live Chairman Mao. Now these also appeared on a, on a particular stamp which is interesting because stamps seem to be somehow part of the, the themes here, I guess, or whoever is uh, making these ads, they have a thing for stamps. Um, so these are just different people's theories. Very interesting. So anyone can submit a clue or your theory. 10,000 is generally used in Chinese for infinite. So to wish someone 10,000 years of life is to wish them eternal life. Very interesting. The early clues seem to hint uh, at a motive for the whole thing. May Day is a as a holiday is a celebration of the working man as opposed to the capitalist. It is an important day for protests against the World Bank, etc. There seems to be a preoccupation with the theme of money and banks in many articles, and these early messages have a very communist theme. May Day is an especially important holiday in communist countries. Perhaps these are people engaged in extra-legal protesting who want to organize their protests without the police finding out. The rest could just be games. That is my best guess as to what this is all about. I was researching Bu Shao and Kangzi radicals and stumbled upon the first character in the image. Hair, fur, feathers. So this is some weird stuff. Um, Chairman Mao. Yes, exactly. 
um, been too busy to look at this for a while, so apologies if I'm repeating things that have already been seen elsewhere. The Chinese had been deciphered, but no one seems to have commented on SR slash CL Richmond. If it's a place that's intended, there are upteen to choose from. The SR slash CL, I seem to vaguely recall, has been commented on another page. So at the risk of repeating what someone else has said, I came across this very formula used in a contingency planning context to represent safety review slash checklist. If that is what is intended, then Richmond might be connected in some way. Now, I'm not sure that that's what it actually stands for. There's been other speculation that... It is the, the name of the man who purchased um, a stamp company, I guess, or a, a stamp clearing house or something. Very weird stuff. And yeah, Stan Stanley Richmond, the Daniel Keller company. So that was interesting. He says, I'm beginning to think there is a definite connection between long live Chairman Mao sayings and long live Chairman Mao stamps issued in China on may 1st 1967 the stamps can be found here so there is a link it is worth noting that the name richmond is well known in the stamp collecting world this page describes stanley richmond as the world-renowned stamp dealer in philatelist <laughs> i guess i'm saying that right i'm probably not mr richmond as the president of the daniel keller company located in boston very interesting Interesting thoughts on the stamps and the Chinese Mao stamps from May 1st. Stamps do seem to crop up on a lot of pages. And in fact, the most recent one, as you'll see, also has stamps of Martin Luther. And they say stamps and postmarks are important. Also, Stanley Richmond's initials are SR. Any prominent stamp collectors with the initial CL? I don't think it's that simple, but just a thought. Yeah, I don't know if anyone said their thoughts for what the CL stands for, but the SR slash CL appears on, I think, almost every ad. And there's a late motif in every ad. It is very bizarre. So we'll go back to the next ad. Again, SR slash CL soon. So these are the clues people have submitted. Carlos, I think the small ad of 1981 has cuneiform numbers in it. It's been ages since I last read about that numbering system, but some of the cuneiform in there are numerals. Very interesting. I quickly checked the local text on Mesopotamic maths. Indeed, some of the cuneiform in the ad seem to be numerals, but the rest are apparently not. I don't know crap about Mesopotamic languages and alphabets, but I think this message could only make sense if you know the source of the cuneiform lines. Um, yeah, I think they're using ciphers. And so if you don't have the key, you're not going to be able to un encode or uncode the message. He says, this is looking more like early Babylonian or Assyrian. Very interesting. I'm 75% sure this comes from the code of Hammurabi. I don't know what line it is, nor do I know what it says. It is only my strong suspicion that it comes from Hammurabi. However, the fact that there are numbers helps to validate that suspicion. Furthermore, if that is truly the source, then it may be less significant what it actually means than the fact that it comes from the code of Hammurabi. Cheers, mogul. Very interesting. Um... It could be ancient Chinese. No, I don't think so. Okay, so these are people who've been doing a lot um, of looking into like what this is. Uh, you can read this yourself if you like. Wow, that's wild. Okay, so they're saying this was smiling at me today. This unbelievably obscure sniff it comes from office paperwork of a, Su a sumerian temple it translates as it's fish weird the source of the haverford library collection of cuneiform tablets or documents from the temple archives of tello part one philadelphia very very interesting indeed so that's what it seems to come from he says, there's uh, something I want to point out. The, the 1905 references to drawings of the tablet and not transliterations or translations. Those were first published in 1998 years after this ad. 
The 1990s transliteration of this tablet is given on the CDLI link with the image of the tablet. The translated numbers or pen strokes might have some information, but I doubt if they are expecting someone to translate this unless it was an expert. In the translation of cuneiform, the first step is transliteration which is the conversion of the symbols into syllables, representatives of the spoken language. I think the written language is the ancient Middle East changed, varied more than the spoken ones, so the spoken ones make better starting points for an ex-to-English dictionary. There are several of those dictionaries. One would be applicable to this tablet is the Chicago Assyrian Dictionary, which was recently pointed out to Brian by the freaks. The CAD is a project of Oriental Institute, part of the University of Chicago, with offices in the loop. At some point in time, the Haverford Library collection was transferred to the Oriental Institute, which is now, um, uh, which who now own the particular tablet this comes from. Very interesting. The transliteration gives the numbers as 541 in the first row and 834 in the second. The one in the first row uses the same symbol that was used for half, the first and most easily recognizable symbol in my attempt to match the patterns. While they used a sexagesimal base 60, the same as our degree, minutes, seconds, math, these don't fit into the system because they come with their own units. Okay, so as far as I know, um, they have not decoded this. Um, I'll read this comment though. Uh, okay, I guess we can confirm that they had a transliteration now. Anon's uh, clue pointing to a location um, northwest of Khartoum in Sudan tallies with info from other announcements. IIRC, the location, at least general location, need to check has come up before. They insist on continental European connections, so their use of leaders, if that's the case, would be would not be problematic. Main thing I was going to post, the text talks about fish. The fish being a symbol used by early Christians, yes, notably when they had to be secretive during their persecution by Roman authorities. Point is, these early announcements don't reference Christianity, but it is one of the main themes running through all the communications and through the project in general after this first series. This could, in one respect, be a signal that after this introductory series, as I see it, they've decided to switch from using communism to Christianity as a dominant theme if they want to maintain any level of secrecy, this would be a sensible move when working in the United States. Far less likely to draw unwanted attention, I guess. This then begs the question as to whether their prevailing ideology might not indeed be communist and the Christianity that pervades their communications simply a guise and a source of material with which to weave their code. Or perhaps they follow neither. The two ideologies represented a choice of guises that were suitable covers for their agenda. The concept of the final judgment could be compared in a way to the communist goal of rev revolution. Either might be termed a great day by their proponents and represent a point of sweeping change where an old order is swept away and something else is put in place. Back to the fish symbol of the early Christians working in secrecy in the Roman Empire, leaving little symbols to communicate to their brethren. It may be possible to see the situation and activities of the early Christians as analogous in some respects to their activities and or intentions. Very interesting indeed okay so we will go back <clears throat> and we'll look at the next one so here is where we first get smiley guy smiley guy will be present i think in all of the other ads m moving forward so again we have long live chairman mao Clue. This is just a weird thing about Smiley Guy. As I write this, this is the earliest appearance he makes in the ads. He has six hairs. and the next ad, he has five. And the following ad, another of the new ads, he has six again. And the next ad, it's hard to tell. But he appears to have six. And the next ad, he has five. Okay, so I decided to check them all. He always has five hairs. There were other ads where he was either too small for me to tell or particularly obliterated. Then it changes again. From May 1997 to the present, he consistently has six hairs. In March 20th, 1991 ad, he apparently doesn't appear, but part of the ad is obscured on the right. Minutia, I may be getting a little too obsessed with this stuff. Yes, perhaps you are. Now we have this one. So we have Smiley Guy here, and again we have SRCL. So he, um, 
Clues people have sent in. Hello, Brian. I've been puzzling over these announcements since arriving in Tucson almost 20 years ago. I had a little free time this week and spent it becoming reacquainted with the whole thing. I wish I hadn't chucked my old Wildcat copies and notes when I moved briefly to New York anyway. I got scans of the two messages I noticed weren't up on your site, the ones from April 1983. Um, clue, another odd one. Again, is this really from... 1983 it's the same one as the one from march 1985 but missing the statements underneath these words are from hannibal uh the general of north africa we will find a way or we will make one very interesting and smiley guy has seven hairs wow that is so wild uh here we might also note that the words in the quote have the initial letter capitalized as if they were a title but it is not this leads me to wonder if it has been written this way because it's actually being used as an acronym very interesting okay so then people start getting into some weird stuff like um gematria and whatnot Okay, so it says the creator of this announcement may have been an alumnus of the Lutheran-based St. Andrew's Episcopal School education system that was founded in 1947. That is very interesting because we will see that there are connections to Martin Luther as he's repeatedly brought up. There are four historical figures repeatedly brought up in the ads this is a slogan that can be seen at the university of pennsylvania assisted by benjamin franklin and the foundation first clue freemasons numerous signs and symbols that are used by the fraternity are included in many clues the orphanage now this is a little far-fetched or is it look at the oxford orphanage and its relation to freemasonry lastly in my mind the largest clue the first clue possibly the most intriguing clue chairman mao ten thousand years of age in many eastern nations this is used as an expression of respect joy and celebration fittingly this clue happens to fall numerous times on may 1st which is arguably the most important date to freemasonry may 1st 1776 when the final element in the equation of freemasonry was introduced it's already possessed by this time of strains of fertility cult islamic mysticism alchemy temple templary and rosicrucianism those were symbolic stones in the arch that formed a doorway to witchcraft the keystone on the arch uh, was provided by an obscure jesuit trained professor of canon law at the university of ingolstadt in bavaria adam weishaupt the important date of witchcraft calendar of may 1st was selected for the foundation of the ancient and illuminated seers of bavaria it was found on a mixture of Masonic secrets, Islamic mysticism, and Jesuit mental discipline. This would seem to be a matter of celebration of the fraternity. It is my belief that many clues were introduced to its viewers and have been introduced to intrigue of many and mystify us all. There seems to be no answer at the proverbial end of the tunnel, just more questions. When the question that should be asked is who and why, who, Freemasonry, why? Well, that has been a question for outsiders looking in for centuries. In my mind, it's a celebration in the grandest of ways of an institution that thrives on intellectuals and secrets we know something you don't know and possibly will never know very interesting indeed so moving on to the next one here we have again 1982 um we don't need to go too deep into this because they're gonna get weirder and weirder you got smiley guy again with five hairs this time um just something to get started i tried translating the text from latin to english only to find the other latin word is ought which translates to either or very interesting so okay the orphanage perhaps the orphanage is a devotee of seneca or francis bacon probably bacon would not surprise me at all we will find a way or we will make a way yes oh wow oof there's some weird stuff here now we go to November um, 1983, implementation of VM and Venomous uh, third and current series, final transmission for 83, 84 transmissions as per coordinates. Adjust for green, which mean minus one. So 
There's some just weird stuff here. And of course, we have Smiley Guy at the end. Since they asked for people to take a closer look at this particular date, here's my contribution. A time, two times, and half a time seems to be a biblical reference found in at least two places in the book of Daniel. Then I, Daniel, looked and two others appeared, one standing on this bank of the stream and one on the other. One of them said to the man clothed in linen who was upstream, How long shall it be until the end of these wonders? The man clothed in linen who was upstream raised his right hand and his left hand toward the heaven, and I heard him swear by the one who lives forever that it would be for a time, two times, and half a time. And that when the shattering of the power of the holy people comes to an end, all of these things would be accomplished. I heard but cannot understand. So I said, my Lord, what shall be uh, the outcome of these things? He said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are to remain secret and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified, cleansed and refined, and the wicked shall continue to act wickedly. None of the wicked shall understand, but those who are wise shall understand. From the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that desolates is set up, there shall be 1,000 290 days. Happy are those who preserve and attain the 3,335 days. But you go your way. The rest you shall rise for your reward at the end of the days. And another quote, he shall speak words against the most high and shall wear the saints, wear out the saints of the most high and shall think to change the times and the law and they shall be given into his hand for a time, two times and a half a time. It's very interesting. Now, when we read this purified, cleansed, and refined, that is reminiscent of alchemy, which is clearly referenced uh, as mo late motifs or themes uh, through these ads. From Plutarch's Lives, the um, book on Themos Thromistocles, chapter 2, section 3, but rather taking in, a, in hand a city that was small and inglorious and making it glorious and great. Very interesting. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Yeah, Oliver Cromwell. Um, okay. Very interesting. You see a widening ideological chasm between two Protestant camps, and wishing to avoid more social strife, Com Cromwell dissolved the rump in 1653, calling it a conclave of corrupt and unjust men, scandalous to the profession of the gospel. He then assembled a so-called assembly of saints, which he hoped would rule in fear of God. This body consisted of a few religious fanatics, but contrary to the conventional portrait, the members of the assembly were mostly sober-minded, moderate men. Cromwell admonished them to be pitiful and tender toward all thought of different judgments. Love all, tender all, cherish and countenance all in all things that are good. And if the poorest Christian, the most mistaken Christian, shall desire to live peaceably and quietly under you, I say, if any shall desire but to lead a life of godliness and honesty, let him be protected. Interesting indeed. Okay, so going back to the next ad, here we have again, oh my goodness, a repeat message. Now we have September 13th, 1984. Again, with the quote, and I think we have a couple coordinates added now. We shall find a way or we shall make one. Again, referencing sort of revolutionary goals. I think that's something that is um, important. And then, of course, we have occult symbolism. Um, some occultists use triangle as a summoning symbol. At the culmination of a ritual, the desired being is expected to appear within the triangle inscribed on the floor. The occultist often performs this ritual under the protection of a circle, point up and point down triangles. Ye. This is the one from 1985. It is necessary to make war, not as one would, but as one must. More coordinates added. Very interesting. Hmm. Clue. Chinese Gordon killed at uh, Karatorm. I'm sure I'm butchering these names. Um, if that's, I'm sure I am. You don't have to comment about that. I'm aware that a lot of this shit is weird. <laughs> so please forgive me if I'm butchering names. If anybody has any information about the Mayday Mysteries, 
up leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this what is the purpose of this you know what it reminds me of it sort of reminds me of the cicada 3301 thing but this was obviously well before that it almost seems like a way to kind of find certain people that are good at cryptography linguistics mathematics history theology and kind of find these people and get them involved in a certain way. Maybe it's a way of locating potential recruits for their organization. Yeah, the Ides of March, the when Julius Caesar was assassinated. Very interesting. And you'll just see how, how crazy these ads become. So I'm not going to go through the the uh, decoding of all of these so far. I'm just showing the ads because just check out, this is, st we're still in the 80s here. Look at how wild this stuff becomes. So I will include the link to the website. If you want to start reading like the people that have decoded this or have tried to, the clues that they have posted, you can. And if you want to leave one of your own clues, go ahead. But I want to just look at the more general themes of this because there definitely are some. Yeah, late motif. That was one of the reasons for Stalin acting as a supreme censor. If you believe that the written words affect men's actions, then you watch it. Lord Snow, a variety of men. One, blessed are the young ones that have died, who had not the time or patience for this earthly ride. Reason with the wind and advise the air, but tell not sorrow's child that life is fair. When Milpeta complained that Najima's exposition of the morning text was too hard to understand, Najima replied, the sword that kills is the sword that saves. Once you bend it, you can't mend it. I pray you, Lord God, strengthen me this once that I may be avenged upon the Philistines for one of my two eyes. Thus, those he killed at his death were more than he had slain in his life. Give me water when I am thirsty, whiskey when I am dry, Sally when I need her, and heaven when I die. The bomb in the baby carriage was wired to the radio. These are the days of miracle and wonder. Don't cry, baby, don't cry. When a Critton asked uh, Cervantes if he regretted the maiming of his left arm in the crusade against the infidel Turk, Cervantes replied, uh, To have fought at Lepanto, I would have given my right arm. And then we have this down here. And we have Smiley again. Very interesting. Now we go to 1988. Bizarre stuff. Stop Israeli Nazism. Very interesting. Okay. Um, unscheduled, it says. Very interesting. But we see, once again, the SR slash CL. The East India man, Arabella, was buffeted while rounding the Cape and had to put in both uh, Walvis Bay and Luanda to avoid complications. Captain Morgan dispatched the vats of full doctrine overland via one Kanaga and two Kisangane Juba. Kirchner Pasha, Pasha was already filed the manly manifest in uh, Kartoam, set chronometers as per, quote, drink for my friends and water for their horses, latitude as per, quote, freedom is the recognition of necessity. And then there's a little admit one ticket. Very interesting. So here we have this ad. Schrodinger has delivered. Benedicta sit sancta trinitas. Okay, I'm not going to be able to read that. <laughs> <laughs> this is so wild. Quote, give unto us beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Isaiah 63, 1. Very interesting. The stuff is so weird. I swear. Then, okay, then we start to get these really complicated, um, bigger, like almost full page ads. So you have a chemical formula. You have um, a 
part of chess, you have a quote by Dostoevsky, when the lake of fire, uh, when shown the lake of fire with the dam struggling in the flames, I said, there is no torment worse than this. But the archangel Michael said, these are the lucky ones, millions of sunk to the bottom and them God forgot. Oof. So it talks about like, revelation there's these cross swords you have smiley guy again with five hairs this time kick a guard quote uh, now the story of abraham contains such a teleological suspension of the ethical for abraham is the representative of faith and faith is normally expressed in him whose life is not merely the most paradoxical that can be thought but rather is so paradoxical that it cannot be thought at all um again there's alchemical uh, references by rust and corrosion, by mold and dry rot, by silence and avoidance, by seepage and spillage, by defect and by dung, by flab and flatulence, by ebb and by shall, by gutter, guttering candle and brushled lamp, by halves, by quarters, by loss and forfeit, by stutter and by stammer, by rent sails and uncalked hulls, by lukewarm and half bright, by stench and stagnation, by dead roaches and live flies, by slow waste and annual decline, by palsy and cataract, by drooling coma and abandoned death by whatever means necessary. So there's some weird shit. <laughs> For the kingdom of God does not consist of talk, but of power. We got that quote again. Our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. The Greek phrase above mal means roughly from out of death, life. Very strange. Huh. Yeah, we know that uh, for our, our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honors from the Declaration of Independence. So again, there's just such weird stuff in these ads as they become more and more complex. The fuzzy, furry freak brothers spent the summer on Grandpa's farm. The farm is a training ground for the CIA. I do not know if that is the farm that is being referenced here, but I do find it kind of interesting. You know, hmm. Hotel California, very interesting. Okay, so, and again, CR slash CL, and we have Smiley Guy. Here's another one, late motif. First coordinate beginning at a point 60 and 36 one hundredths feet north of the United States Mexico International Boundary Line, Monument Number 122, thence to Section 8, Township 24, South, Range 14 East. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my word. Here's another one. We. What? Late motif. Ah, Grendel, you make them what they are for as long as they last. Schrodinger has removed from the state house all in companion documents to box number 668 and must deliver them to the orphanage by noon on Ascension Day. That's creepy. The direct route over the Charles is closed and Farangut is the option that the blockade cannot be run. Therefore, Schrodinger is in transit over land. He is not traveling alone. ID of couriers can be verified as per mutanus uh, mutandus through, and there are coordinates here. This is just some bizarre stuff. Now, this says, as the pigs, we have obtained at least one coordinate. So, they, that's another thing. They reference the pigs a lot, which I suppose is their reference to, to law enforcement or something. Um, very strange. Okay, so let's go back and look at this one. Check this out. What? Smiley guy is cut off. Rude. Schrodinger arrives safely at the orphanage. You may be living in another country under another name. It is the nature of obsession that of all things, second best is the most detested. <laughs> what? Holy cow. This is some weird stuff, guys. Okay. Let me zoom out. May Day, 1989. Again, we have SR slash CL. 
and this is another full page ad late motif quote papa may have and mama may have but god bless the child that's got his own weird the orphanage will supply the refreshments so again referring to themselves as the orphanage they also refer to like a, a rival secret society or something which they refer to as pelagian devils it is very strange here's another ad here's 1989 The fools are in great demand, especially for social occasions. And then there are, again, coordinates. Late motif, time has no meaning and units less than 10. Huh. The Pelagians still hold the lease on 490 Lafont Plaza East. Therefore, Schrodinger and Winthrop have laden the quote-unquote Arabella with one tev of... Volk I'm not even going to be able to pronounce that. Ridley and Latimer have boarded the city of Richmond, while Mr. Kutz has seconded Matthias Flaccius to pilot the Nezak. George Cantor has scheduled simultaneous docking of all three vessels. Invitations for the summer tour are in transit. So the Pelagians are their like their rival group or something or their enemies. It's so bizarre. Here we have another one. Late motif. It will be as if time were rolled into a ball. Luther. Reform without enforcement is Camelot without Merlin. Oof. That's 1990. And that was Gustavus Adolphus photograph there. So we have a key, some weird writing here. Smiley guy with six hairs this time. Late motif. It is good to know the law, but it's better to know the judge. Interesting. Oh, we have 1990. Wow, this one's wild. Oh, wow. Vision is the art of seeing the invisible. Got smiley guy again. So they each have a late motif, as you can see. 1991. Again, some really strange stuff. Time's arrow is the late motif here. Late motif, my time is in your hand. You see Martin Luther. And again, um, these ads cost money to place. Clearly someone is designing them and spending money on this. It is so weird. To whom much is given, the more will be expected. That was the late motif there. You know, and they say things like winter tour, summer tour, something very strange about that. I guess that's a reference to them meeting. Huh. Now we're in 1992 and check it out. These look like they're from stamps. Yeah, they are from stamps. So again, we have that whole stamp connection. Late motif here upon this bank and shell of time. Very bizarre. The little orphan children sliced by the midget tag team and fried by the asylum choir the loyal order of unreconstructed freaks will distribute the itinerary for the summer tour huh very bizarre stuff indeed september of 1992 
December of 1992, Pelagian and revisionist algorithms will invariably produce morphological anomalies as per knots had all spent where our desire is got without consent. Baking cut from the pigs will victual the Arabella for the winter tour. So weird. There is nothing better than disappointment. False friends and failed hopes enable us to do what no mortal would willingly pursue. Luther. It is, again, the late motif. Now we're into March 1993. Lest he that holds the key should be my enemy. That's the late motif for this ad. Smiley guy is down here, but I cannot see how many hairs are on his head. So you're starting to see sort of the bizarre nature of this stuff. New corn from old fields is the late motif of this one. And again, it is super complex. Super weird. Uh, it looks like Smiley Guy has maybe five hairs on his head on this one. It's so bizarre. They have the late motif for this one. There is no excellent beauty which does not have some strangeness in the proportions. That is a quote from Sir Francis Bacon. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of a Pelagian, dot, dot, dot. Well, they refer to them as Pelagian devils. This is so strange. The late motif for May Day 1994, what is now proved was first imagined by Blake. And again, very, very wild, very strange. Very strange stuff. December 1994. We have a quote from Ovid as the late motif. Now, May 1995. Um, some very bizarre stuff. But you can see Luther, Cromwell, Calvin, and Adolphus. Those are the same people that crop up again and again. We got Smiley Guy. December 1995, um, more weird shit. <laughs> May 1996, late motif, one time will owe another. And again, we have Luther, Cromwell, Calvin, and Adolphus. I was shaken with love and dread, St. Augustine. December 1996. Very strange. The history of language is the history of thought. A quote from Lenin. May 1997. Again, we have these same four guys. The late motif is theory attracts practice as the magnet attracts iron. This is some wild stuff, guys. The late motif on this one from 1997, quote, they heard because they were condemned to silence and learned to see because they had no light, unquote, Thomas Blackburn. May 1st, 1998, late motif, the material world exists nowhere but in the mind, Jonathan Edwards. Very weird. December 1998. May 1st, 1999. Wow. Isn't this stuff weird? Isn't it strange? Now we're into the year 2000. And we have Novus Ordo Seclorum. That is their late motif for the year 2000, a new world order. Lovely. And again, we have Cromwell, Luther, Calvin, and Adolphus. Another full-page ad. October 2000. Lest he that holds the key should be my enemy, as the late motif of that one. December 6, 2000. Some weird stuff again. A diamond is traumatized mud. Well, that's super weird. 
they talk about the revisionists and i think that's what they mean by the pelagian devils so again we have a cross with luther calvin adolphus and cromwell the endless line of splendor you guys are freaking weird power shared is power lost a quote by machiavelli Here's another announcement. This one was super weird. May 2002. <clears throat> but he answered him nothing. St. Luke. Again, these same guys are referenced. A full page ad. This is so weird. December 4, 2002. May 1st, 2003. Okay, so we're not going to look at all of these. I want to go to the most recent, May 1st, 2002. We've got the stamps again with Martin Luther. We have Novus Ordo, a new world order. Um, the late motif here. It says, salient passage of the Cambridge Platform. Quote, idolatry, blasphemy, heresy are to be restrained and punished by civil authority. What is past is prologue. Burn, baby, burn. A terrible beauty is born. Yeats. So we have, again, Adolphus, Luther, Cromwell, Calvin. Eventual realization is not a problem. Lascaux waited 17,000 years. Boil them in their own blood. Courtesy of Lenin and Lord and Keynes orphans preferred they have referenced the ad from 2000 that we talked about with the novus ordo seclorum a tale told by an idiot hotel california so you can never leave right <laughs> well begun is half done the child is father to the man it will rain tonight first murderer let it come down and they're referencing prior ones that they did Revisionist, you were warned the day you swore the oath, blood in, blood out. Very strange. Here's April 1st, 2002. Or, I'm sorry, 2022. So these are recent. Like, guys, they're still going. December 21st, 2021. Late motif, fee fi fo fum, I smell the blood of a Pelagian. So once again... Ble uh, Bletchley Park suck on this. Oh my god. Debauch the currency. That is interesting. Because I think we're seeing our currency be devalued in the United States. August 23rd, 2021. They're talking about their plenary sessions. The Pelagian Devils. Burn and hell traitors. Oof. As the roasted pig is placed on the ebony banqueting hall and the aroma of defunct adversaries ascends to the redwood rafters, the plenary session will convene at the Hotel California in the Crystal Chamber. This is so bizarre. Fee upon the Bletchley Park. Oh, this is so wild. Soon, Sally, soon. What? You guys are so strange. January 25th, 2021. Fire make your body cold when I give you mine to hold. Oh, it's so weird. May 1st, 2021. This is some creepy stuff. A loyal order of unreconstructed freaks. <laughs> August 4th, 2020. We owe God a death. Oh, that's creepy. Oof. June 23rd, 2020. Anniversary of the Confessio Augustana. That seems to be something that they're very interested in. May 1st, 2020. Mm 
This is so weird. June 19th, 2019. May 1st, 2019. Dare to hope. Again, the Novus Order Seclorum. Culminating in the Novus Order Seclorum, the Orphanage directly commands Latimer and Ridley for bringing us one step closer to reform without enforcement is Camelot without Merlin. This shit again of like, you know, thought control. Okay. Now, I want to go to each of these individuals. Oliver Cromwell was an English general and statesman who, first as subordinate and later commander-in-chief, led armies of the Parliament of England against King Charles during the English Civil War, subsequently ruling the British Isles as Lord Protector until his death. Um, Cromwell was born into the landed gentry to a family descended from the sisters of Henry Thomas Cromwell, blah, blah, blah. Little is known of his life. Um, to, okay, here we go. Uh, he became an independent Puritan after undergoing a religious conversion in the 1630s, taking a generally tolerant view toward the many Protestant sects of the time. An intensely religious man, Cromwell fervently believed in God guiding him to victory. So he was tolerant of the Protestants. Martin Luther, German priest, theologian, author, and hymn writer, he is best known among Christians as the seminal figure in the Protestant Reformation and as the namesake of Lutheranism. He's known for espousing significant anti-Semitic rhetoric. Um, okay. Interesting. Luther taught that salvation and consequently eternal life are not earned by good deeds, but rather received only as the free gift of God's grace through the believer's faith in Jesus Christ as redeemer from sin. His theology challenged the authority and office of the Pope by teaching that the Bible is the only source of divinely revealed knowledge, as opposed to sacerdotalism, by considering all baptized Christians to be a holy priesthood. Those who identify with these and all of Luther's wider teachings are called Lutherans, though Luther insisted upon Christian or evangelical as the only acceptable names for individuals who professed Christ. Then John Calvin, um, he was a principal figure in the development of a system of Christian theology later called Calvinism. Yes, yeah, so he was, a, again, a reformer during the Protestant Reformation. Um, in, in the doctrines, it talked of predestination and of God's absolute sovereignty and the salvation of the human soul from death and eternal damnation. Calvinist doctrines were influenced by and elaborated upon the Augustinian and other Christian traditions. Various congregational, reformed, and Presbyterian churches which look to Calvin as the chief expositor of their beliefs has spread throughout the world. Gustavus Adolphus um, was the king of Sweden and is credited with the rise of Sweden as a great European power. Sweden became one of the primary military forces in Europe during the Thirty Years' War, helping to determine political and religious balance of power in Europe. Hmm. He was often regarded as one of the greatest military commanders in modern history with the early use of combined arms. Interesting. His most notable military victory was the Battle of Breton Field in 1631. Um, let's see. He's known as the father of modern warfare. Interesting. Of the first or the first modern general. Oh, targeting Jesuit collections. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Ah, he is widely commemorated by Protestants in Europe as the main defender of their cause during the Thirty Years' War. So again, Protestantism. Now we get to Pelagianism. It is a heretical Christian theological position that holds that original sin did not taint human nature and that humans, by divine grace, have free will to achieve human perfection. Pelagius, an Irish ascetic and philosopher, taught that God could not command believers to do the impossible, and therefore it must be possible to satisfy all divine commandments. He also taught it was unjust to punish one person for the sins of another. Therefore, infants are born blameless. 
as Pelagius accepted no excuse for sinful behavior and taught that all Christians, regardless of their station in life, should lead unimpeachable sinless lives. To a large degree, Pelagianism was defined by its opponent, Augustine, and exact definitions remain elusive. Although Pelagianism has considerable support in the contemporary Christian world, especially among the Roman elite and monks, it was attacked by Augustine and his supporters, who had opposing views on grace, predestination, and free will. Augustine proved victorious in the Pelagian controversy. Pelagianism was decisively condemned at the 1418 Council of Carthage and is still regarded as heretical by the Roman Catholic Church and Eastern Orthodox Church. For centuries afterwards, Pelagianism was used in various forms of the pejorative accusation of heresy for Christians who hold unorthodox beliefs. But it has undergone reassessment by recent scholarship. Oh, of course. Yes. Um, okay, so... It's just interesting it, that there does seem to be this thing with uh, Protestantism, you know, and that's why I think that, yeah, the Pelagian devils have failed to defeat the endless line of splendor. We shall overcome them by rust, by corrosion. Yeah, exactly. By whatever means necessary. Very creepy. Late motif, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. May 1st, 2017, late motif, the most imp important branch of science, theology, Hegel. Very strange. Okay, so we're looking at a really weird secret society here. The fisher's son must cast a vow when shallow waters peter out. Everything that is done in the world is done by hope. Very strange. April 30th, 2016, late motif, he calls whom he will, John Owen. March 23rd, 2016, very strange, agony is frugal. Hmm, and there's a bunch of smiley guys on this one. That's super creepy. Anyways, this video is over an hour long. I have no answers for you on who the orphanage is and who the Pelagian devils are. Um, clearly they're purporting to be a secret society that is publishing their communications through the Arizona Daily Wildcat. Um, is this just shit posting <laughs> in very complicated form by somebody like Rutherford? Uh, is this an actual group organization? Who can say? But anyways, let me know what you guys think about it. Um, what are your thoughts on the, the entire thing, the May Day mystery? Um, is this something that you find interesting? Would you like me to do another video on this and go into more detail on it? Um, this has already become much longer than I wanted it to be, but it's just so weird, you know? You can't help but want to look at it. And um, it once you start looking into this stuff, I mean, it just takes up so much time because just trying to decode one of these things is like this never-ending task. It is really weird. But I think that they're kind of simpler than they first appear. You know, they have a lot of complex stuff in them, but the I think the main leitmotif, the main theme of it, um, it could be as simple as something like that. And just looking at the coordinates, I think that there's a lot of stuff put in there um, maybe to throw people off or to just be weird and cryptic. But it seems like they want people talking about it. They want it to be spread. And I think that's kind of strange because, you know, it it kind of reminds me of like the cicada thing or, um, well, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get in trouble by YouTube, but another recent phenomenon from 2017 that began on the internet with people decoding posts that were made by a cryptic individual with so-called insider information that got a bunch of people basically wasting their time and propagating things that they didn't really understand, you know? And so I think that that's sort of the goal here with the May Day Mysteries, to get more and more people talking about it, to spread whatever it is that they want to spread. They seem to be, you know, revolutionaries. I do not know if, if you could call them communist, but it seems like that's sort of what they are. So anyways, it's very weird. Let me know your thoughts. If you have any information on it, 
leave a comment in the comment section. And if you haven't already, you should like and subscribe to my channel.